channel and in this video we're going to be taking a look inside the Heritage Lottery application. So um, here we are on the National Lottery's Heritage Fund page. Um, so there are a couple of different funds, again like most funders there's a small and a large um, pot for funding. Um, so we're going to go ahead and have a look. So looking inside the um, what we fund page, uh, you can see what is heritage. So it could be do anything to do with uh, history, historical buildings, museums, libraries. Um, it could also be to do with the landscape, countryside, nature. So there's a lot here, um, archaeology as well, um, and uh, and also industrial, maritime, and transport. It's got there. So those are all the different things that it classifies. So projects that they fund, so CICs can go for this funding. And what, so what they'll spend money on, as you can see here, some kind of activities that um, sort of basically widen the community's engagement with heritage. Um, so that might be sharing oral stories, workshops, activities linked to heritage somehow. Um, also, they've got repairs, conservation, that's about historic buildings and landscape. Digital outputs also they've got on there. New staff posts, that's in the heritage sector. Um, also paid training placements, professional fees. So there's quite a lot of stuff there that they um, fund. So we're going to go ahead and look at a, a fund that I've uh, just done an application for, um, for a heritage project. So if we look at how to apply, so here you can see you've got three to 10,000, then you've got 10,000 to a quarter of a million, then a quarter of a million to five million. So um, we're gonna be looking at the 3,000 to 10,000 pot for a heritage project. Now, the fantastic thing about, what I really like about the Lottery's Heritage um, applications is they get you to do what's called, you can see here, expression of interest. So you do like a mini application form as an expression of interest first. You send that off to them, then they give you feedback back. Um, so the great thing about that is they'll basically inform you already, like before you go through the whole big application, whether they think it'll be funded and they'll give you some feedbacks of how to improve it. Um, so I've already done that and they gave me some really useful bits of feedback. Um, so now I've been able to go ahead now and write the whole full application form. So here's what I've written. So this project is on uh, Cornish mining heritage. So I live in Cornwall um, and this is actually going to be something of a personal project to me uh, because it's related to my dad who was a miner um, and he was a really key activist in the, um, in the fight to keep the mines open in the 80s, uh, well 70s, 80s and 90s is the period when sort of that industrial heritage came to an end in Cornwall. So I've called the project title, I wanted to give it something kind of exciting and relevant, I've called it What Cornish Boys To Do. That is a direct um, reference to a poem that was written during those protest times um, and it was called What Cornish Boys To Do and it was to do with like, when if the mines closed and it's a very well known one and it was used in a lot of protest material at the time. So that's why I've used that. So got here where's the project taking place so I've actually partnered with um, Giverton Mine which is a local mine so with the heritage projects you definitely want to partner with some other heritage sector people whether it be local museums heritage sites um, so really need to partner it's really important so I'm not going to read you all of this because it's quite long as you can see um, so what I've done is it's fairly easy to describe your idea so what they want here I've got a whole section like how I came up with the idea what um, sort of prompted it um, and then I've the last half is really um, you know what the actual what I'm going to achieve um, now they did mention that they wanted it you know is it to do with any kind of like commemoration or um, you know important date that's coming up so it's 25 year anniversary this year last Cornish tin mine which is South Crofty closed so I'm on a 25 year anniversary so this project will be for like a 25 year anniversary um, and then, um, so I've got then the project's aims. So I've got a number of aims. So we'll talk about the aims because they really want good, out, obviously, outputs. Um, so what this project is going to do, it's going to um, 
It's going to correlate research documents, oral histories, photos from people in the tin crisis and the fight to keep the mines open. So what I'm actually going to be doing is, is networking with not just my own family because we've got our own records, but other families, other people, because it's something that's in living memory. Uh, people have already got a lot of resources and we're going to be able to get oral history um, interviews as well, which is really important to do before that generation dies off um, to actually capture those oral histories and those memories and those stories. And then we're going to present all of that um, in a one month long exhibition at Giva Mine. Um, and then I'm going to be, who I'm obviously partnering with, um, and then we're going to be donating all of that to the local archives. We're also going to be creating a book and some school materials, which will go to schools, universities and heritage sites. Um, creating a presentation, which I'll, also put, which I'll do live at the exhibition, but I'm also going to put on YouTube. And then I'm going to break it down into bite-sized histories, which I'll put on TikTok and social media. Um, this will create a lasting, uh, accessible public record of that history. Um, also, like, running... Um, and then what they want us to do is what we're going to do with it all. So we're going to deposit it in the local archives. So it's really important if you can do something like this to talk to your local archives and see about depositing everything that you've made. Um, and they can talk to you about how to do that. Now, to get people really engaged at the exhibition, we're going to run some workshops with kids and we're going to use some clay from the mine. Um, there's actual natural clay that's formed there. So my idea is just to do something that's a bit messy with the kids that they can just um, actually, you know, have a tactile, engaging, um, you know, really sensory project um, where they can come in and, and just play with the clay. And we can make some sculptures and we can create an exhibition out of that. So bring in some kind of creative um, activity into it, it just really helps your engagement and sort of helps engage different generations especially the younger generation um, then I've said I'm going to do a series of zoom training presentations online for local national heritage sector education providers so this will be something that's national so um, anybody who's interested really can join those zooms and of course they'll be advertised online um, so that is that section um, there's quite a few big boxes on this one. That's about permissions. What difference will your project make? So I've talked about the impact on the community, why it's important, why that particular period was important for this local area. So I've talked a lot about how this is a very deprived area and just the nostalgia around that period of the mines is huge here. Um, and I've talked about how I've gained evidence from that. I mean, we've um, engaged with people on nostalgia Facebook groups locally. Um, and yeah, so I've really just talked about, you know, um, the difference it'll make on this community. Um, so, and also nationally as well. Um, why is your project important to the community? That's that kind of thing, kind of again, really. Um, what will happen after the project ends? I've already talked about that. It's about depositing it into the archives and giving a uh, accessible online, um, you know, gallery and everything. So it's um, all findable for anyone who wants to research it later. Why is your organisation best place to deliver this project? So I've just talked about, which this is actually a new CIC. So this is going to be really um, great for the CIC's, um, uh, you know, portfolio and will hopefully lead to the, the CIC becoming more sustainable long term. How will the project involve a wide range of people? So I've just talked about who's going to be getting involved in the project. So all the partners, staff, the volunteers, the community, the audience, so all of those people we talk about. Will your project achieve any of the um, any of our other outcomes? So this had loads of different tick boxes. What the they said when I gave the expression of interest was don't tick every box. Just pick the ones that you uh, most strongly you know connect with your project. So this isn't all of them on here. This is just the ones that connected with mine. So we got heritage will be better identified and explained. So talks there about how obviously I'm doing a period that has been under researched. So I'm gathering that new research and, you know, telling it in new engaging ways. Um, people will be learning about heritage, leading to a change in ideas and actions. Just doing a heritage project and interviewing people and getting people involved in that exhibition helps people understand that actually they're sitting on documents from their living memory that are archivable. So it's about promoting what the archives do and promoting, you know, storing some of those things instead of just throwing things in the bin when sadly older people die and nobody knows what they you know referred to if you interview older people about them um, then we'll know what the photographs were and what relevance um, they were 
So um, people have a great sense of well-being, well they do when they engage with any kind of learning, creative um, workshop, uh, just reading um, is, helps well-being. Um, the funded organisation will be more resilient. So I've talked about what our plans are there to make the CIC more resilient off the back of this project. So we're going to be able to, you know, maybe do an online course and maybe actually do um, paid, you know, talks and all these sorts of things. Now, um, and then it's a bit about the local economy being boosted. Really, they're really big on how um, it's going to create jobs. So that's the important point. Um, now we're going on to the budget. So they really make sure you break down the budget quite a lot. Um, if you're being paid on it for quite a lot of the work, break down the work that you're doing into different things that you're doing. Um, so don't put it as one big lump sum. So I've got lots here. So I've got like the printing, promotion, um, got a contingency. They wanted me to put in a contingency. So I've put in a just in case. Um, event costs, um, that's just about like, uh, you know, making the exhibition. Travel costs for volunteers. Professional fees, that's like proofreading. I've uh, put down there professional fees, actually the production of the books. Um, they wanted to see, they actually thought when I did it on the expression of interest, I didn't actually put enough money down for it. So they do want to make sure that it's competitively priced and that it's all priced properly. Otherwise, they'll think it's too big a risk and your project might fail. So make sure you get good quotes and get three quotes if you can. Helps. Um, new staff there, just about the staff and 13 days work, £150 seems to be the lottery's sort of um, day rate, um, so kind of go by that. Professional fees there, installation of the work, equipment material, learning materials, so it's about printing, the exhibition, I'll put there who we're using, um, and yes, yeah, so that's it, 10,000, and then it's got a bit here, non-cash contributions, so oh, if you have any cash contributions, that's any other income coming to the project, so we don't in this instance. Non-cash is like support in kind, so you just kind of kind of make this stuff up, so like the clay that we're using from the ground in Keep Giva is obviously free, because it's just from the ground, so it's 60, just randomly put what like it would cost if you bought clay. Um, room hire, just made up kind of a random well, not random, but, you know, rough figure of what it would cost if you hired a room. Archive staff, like, the, pro the, the their time to actually log all that. Obviously, there is no financial thing attached to that, so just put what you think is right. Give the staff as well, um, and some mentoring there, um, which is free. So that's all sort of free money. So you can see then you've got £4,000 in, like, support in kind to add to it. Then they've got volunteers, how many hours? Supporting evidence. So with the heritage, they really want you to put supporting evidence down. So put in here, um, so what we've got is we've got um, the manager at Giva Mine has done us a supporting letter. Another one I did, I got the local heritage archives um, to do us a letter. Obviously, it's great if you can get one from like the archives or a museum, just saying why your project's important, okay? Um, and then they want you to attach your governing documents. That's your articles of association for your CIC. Um, and that is it. So I'm pretty much all done on this. I'm probably, I might just have a quick another look over it before I send it. So that should take, um, they say about eight weeks. So take about eight weeks to get that. All right. So I hope that was useful seeing inside of that. Um, and like I said, I think because they do expression of interest, if you kind of get past that stage, then you're pretty much all good. Um, so it's not a massively competitive pot of funding like some of the other lottery ones. Um, so do have a go.